The following podcast is scheduled for one fall. From the heart of Broadway in historic downtown Cape Girardeau, this is Pro Wrestling Unscripted. Day, July 31st, that's right, we're just one day away from August, the best month of the year. Not only is it the hottest month, but it's also my birthday. But don't tell anybody. It's also my mom's birthday. Oh, nobody gives a shit. I care, actually. Your mom's sweet. Yeah. It's Pro Wrestling Unscripted here on the Podzilla 1985 Network. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. My name is Shannon Young. I'm Mr. 100. I'm going to be your host. With me tonight, the one and only, and I mean that because she's the one and only person here to do the show with me. Yep. Allie, not actually a bear. Hello. But Allie actually afraid of what's going to happen. And a what little. are you eyeing up over there? Uh, someone walked by. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Absolutely terrible. Asa and Dalton always talk about how bad the shows are when it's just them. Hold my beer. <laughs> Hold my claw. Hold your lukewarm beer. Hold my lukewarm beer <laughs> really quick. Uh, oh God, I was going to say something here at the beginning. Oh, yeah. So if you're wondering, well, where the hell is Asa and Dalton? We want to hear Asa and Dalton. First off, you're a liar. I know you want to hear Asa. Dalton can take it or leave it. He's like a he's like a warm beer. Most people would just know. I stand by my point. <laughs> okay. So you may or may not have heard of a gentleman named Marco Stunt. Very popular guy. He's really taken off in the wrestling industry. I think he's going to go somewhere. I really do. Marco was a good friend of ours, and he is having dinner with CCW owner Jason Wells, who's also a good friend of, of the show and of Marco's. And uh, we were all invited to go have dinner with Marco and Jason and whoever, who else, God knows who else, at Lambert's. This is where the show's going to get controversial because I don't care for Lambert's at all. Um, I do care about saving money. And Lambert's is kind of expensive. And, and yeah. I'm not a fan of it. So combine that with, you know, we would have to postpone the show. And there was just a lot of reasons. So Allie and I stayed back. Ace and Dalton went to go have dinner with them. Um, it is not a reflection on anybody there. We love them all. Another big problem with that is I have extreme social anxiety. And I don't think people realize that because I do this show. And just because you can hear me on your listening device doesn't mean that we're actually talking to each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's not a shot against anyone listening. It's just very different. Um, CCW is a job and I, I, I nut up for that one. But if you catch me in public, I'm pretty shy and I'm pretty, I keep to myself. I'm, I'm an introvert, which is strange because I used to be such an extrovert. You're an introvert with extrovert ten- tendencies. I'll take it. But that's not why you all came here tonight. You all came here to talk about professional wrestling. It's probably going to be a short show. We're not going to drag this out. We're going to give you the cold hard facts, talk about it a little bit, and we're going to get the hell out of here and probably go get some little Caesars. That's fine. Damn right it's fine. Let's start off with Marco Stunt, our friend, the guy. You Mr. said you Sunset. think he's going somewhere. I do. And you know where I think he's going? I think he's going to All Elite Wrestling. I do as well. Marco just announced it yesterday on his 23rd birthday that he has signed with All Elite Wrestling, the hottest promotion going right now, short of CCW, obviously. Um, AEW is picking up incredible stars left and right, and Marco is such a good pickup for them. Yes. Not only do we know Marco personally and just love him as a person, him and his family, his brother yes. Logan, his uh, his mother, his father, the uh, Dwindle, and it's 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 just a great family. They're yes. so incredibly kind, and they're yes. so incredibly sweet to us. Um, I told the story on Facebook. I'd like to tell it again because I think it's a real testament to what a good person Marco is. So, um. Myself and Allie, Asa, and Dalton, we've been working with Cape Championship Wrestling for almost as long as they've been in existence. Yeah. Allie and I went to the very first show with our friend Tanner to see, you know, our good friends, Double H, Hunter Hendricks, and Osby Tomlin. Osby Wrestling and Hunter was the guest GM that night. Of course, we never would have expected that Osby would retire that night and that Hunter would become the permanent GM. But um, it was going to be a one-time thing, but we stayed. We started working with CCW more and more, first in an interview capacity for backstage segments that they would play live at the shows, which was a bad idea. It didn't. It, it needed to be better planned. Yeah, it was very on the fly. Um, so, there was a lot of people that we worked with at the time that I don't even remember now. Like there was a woman I they remember. Were, yeah, they were through something. I wonder if they were through the Missourian because there were also people there writing stories. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I wonder if it was the same people. I don't know because they stuck around for a couple months and then we never saw them again. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but as we, we, as we got more and more involved with CCW and we became friends with everybody, we became really good friends with a gentleman named Austin Lane. Austin was probably, other than Brandon Barbwire and Billy Hills, was probably the first person that we really made friends with at CCW. Um, and Sarge. Sexy Sarge O'Reilly, obviously. <laughs> Can't forget Sarge. So, uh, we go to the show one day. We get there early because we just like to get there early and help out and do, mm-hmm. what, do what we could. We, we like to learn. Um, we weren't doing the show at the time. Like chaos wasn't a thing yet, if I remember correctly. Or am I wrong about that? Because this was before Marco. It this was, was before, before the Super Show. So and no, it was not because Super Show was, was the first show we ever did. The first one we ever did. Right. But we were, I think, still trying to figure out the backstage interviews. Yeah, we were still doing the backstage that interviews. Was yeah, in the talks beforehand. Right. So we get there early one show. I don't remember what show it was. Um, people are in the ring practicing as they want to do. And Austin sees us. He jumps out of the ring. He comes over and shakes our hand. We hug because, you know, Austin's an incredible guy. Yes. And then there's this, uh, this kid behind him that also walks up, shakes our hand, introduces himself as Marco. And I have no idea who this kid is. I've never met him. Every never heard of him. single one of us thought it was Austin's child. We legitimately thought it was Austin Lane's kid because they were in there working together. Yeah. And they seemed to know each other really well. And, uh, first off, I want to apologize to Marco for thinking he was Austin's yeah, kid. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's used to it, but sorry. <laughs> uh, secondly, Marco came up, he shook my hand. This is at a time when we had nothing to do with pro, pro wrestling, other than we were fans and we worked on the podcast. You could make the argument at this point, three years later, that we were involved with the business. Obviously, Dalton is a wrestler. Asa is the lead commentator for CCW. You are the camera woman. You're the eyes of CCW. I am a manager and whatever void they need filled at the moment, I fill. So we're, we've all been really, really, um, hard into wrestling for the past couple of years. But at the time we weren't, we were just fans and we knew a couple of them. So Marco comes down, he shakes our hand, he says hi. He was always incredibly nice to us, joked with us, yeah. was like a friend from the beginning. And it wasn't one of those, I'm going to be friends with you because I can use you to get ahead in my career because there was no ahead with us. No. He gained literally nothing. No. In fact, I would say that he lost <laughs> reputation for being friends with Dalton. Okay. I w- <laughs> Just a personal opinion. But he, he, was, he was so nice to us. His dad was so nice to us. His mom was so mm-hmm. nice to us. His brother was so nice to us. And even though they didn't have to be that nice to us because we could offer them nothing in the world of professional wrestling, they were the sweetest. And they have continued to be that way even yeah. now. So Marco is such a stand-up guy. Not just his talent, not just his abilities or you know how, how easy he gets along with everybody in professional wrestling, how he can work with anyone and make him look like a million dollars. He's a good guy. And I, I think more importantly than how talented he is at wrestling, I appreciate that most about him. Yeah. We could not be happier for Marco Stunt than no. we are right now, um, being signed to AEW. And I feel like at some point in the future, Logan will probably also be signed probably. to, to a big fed because Logan also incredibly talented. I know I said I, he had no talent. I don't, I didn't mean that. <laughs> that, that was in character. Um, hell, I wouldn't be surprised if his father got signed somewhere. His dad's an incredible commentator and, and ring announcer. Yeah. That whole family is stupid talented. It's it's kind of sickening actually, and I'm starting to think that maybe I don't appreciate what he's accomplishing. Okay. Um, but okay. Marco, he's been at AEW before. He was at uh the first All In. That All In, yeah. In the uh, Battle Royal, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. The over over budget. the budget Battle Royal. Yeah. He's been at a couple other shows. Most recently, he was teamed up with um Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, two yeah. of my personal favorites now, and that is such a great trio right there I, yeah. I love them all together and i expect big big things from marco and even if he doesn't even if marco goes maybe he doesn't care for it and decides he doesn't want to do it anymore whatever marco does we are supporting him because this isn't just some random guy we saw got signed to aw this is a friend of ours yeah um and we wish him the best yes and to i don't know how many <coughs> things i've seen today most of them are just other people replying saying, you don't, why are you talking about Marco like this? He deserves all of it because he does. Oh, He's you're worked. talking about, uh, yeah. So I, I wanted to mention that I didn't, if Asa were here, he would have stopped me. Asa's not here. <laughs> so there is a wrestler that I saw personally named Gunner. I'm not going to say his last name. His name's Gunner because of course it is. 
who went on this mm-hmm. giant rant. And and first, let me pre- preface this by saying that I don't know Gunner. No. He is apparently friends with some of the people we work with. So I'm not going to insult the man personally. But I think he had a very made a very poor decision yes. in going online and talking about how hard he's worked and then turning that into making fun of the fact that they signed Marco, who's 5'2 and 115 pounds, according to this guy, and uh, that it's stupid and it's silly and it was a bad decision because they picked him over a guy like Gunner. One thing that I absolutely love about professional wrestling is, especially on an indie level, because I don't know how it is in the big leagues, but on an indie level, everything that I've seen is that everyone that comes in the CCW locker room, it's like a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And maybe other independent federations aren't like that. Maybe it's just CCW and we're really, really lucky. But it feels like a brotherhood. And I I love that we always support each other and we're proud of each other. And every time someone gets something, you see all the other wrestlers come out and say, good job, congratulations, I'm proud of you. Except this douche who decided to attack Marco instead of celebrating an accomplishment. congratulating him. Jealousy is not pretty. No. And it's not a good trait to have. And just because someone else makes it doesn't mean that you should knock them down for their accomplishment. Yeah. That's incredibly petty and disrespectful and again i don't know this person and i hope he comes out and apologizes because it's a stupid stupid thing Mm -hmm. that he did and said the part that gets me the most is he said it's a slap in the face to real athletes and in in parentheses he put my face real athletes okay you realize again have you seen all the stuff that marco does right which part of marco was not athletic the part where he flips of uh, the incredible timing he has like what his part agility, of marco his balance his, his balance it's because he's small yeah he's small well ray mysterio is small there's a lot of professional wrestlers that are small and just because you're a, you're blessed to be a big strong guy congratulations but just because Marco's small doesn't mean that he has any less of a right to wrestle yeah. than anyone and more importantly i cannot stress this enough that professional wrestling is a business yes you might not know this he's a wrestler so i'm assuming he knows but maybe someone needs to remind him that wrestling is a work what ma- it doesn't matter how good you are you can be the best wrestler in the world and never make it if you don't have the it factor Marco Stunt has the it factor. Hulk Hogan had the it factor. Their guys, Hogan was never a great wrestler. He was a good wrestler, but he wasn't great compared to some of the guys we have now. And Ace and Dalton would back me up here if they were if they're here. They hate Hulk Hogan, but they would back me up. Hulk Hogan had the it factor. I'm sure there were a lot of guys, and there still are, that when you talk about Hulk Hogan and how much he contributed to the business and how great he was, they'll bring up Ric Flair. No, Ric Flair is the greatest champion. He's a better wrestler. Yes, Ric Flair is a better wrestler, but that doesn't mean Hulk Hogan was not Hulk Hogan and he was important. Gunner can be an incredible wrestler and big and strong, and he maybe he deserves a shot, sure. But Marco got his shot, yeah. and it doesn't mean you can disrespect him and say that he doesn't deserve it. That is petty as hell. You should be ashamed of yourself. Talking about the brotherhood you feel, I saw Bradley post saying, if you have anything negative to say about Marco, you you can do some things. I saw Leo D also post Leo about D, it. Leo D, which yeah. then... um. Chris Jones was the first post that I saw. Like, so many people from our locker room have come out in support of Marco. Yeah. And that's how it should be. Yeah. We should support each other. If I made it, if, if when Dalton said he was going to be a wrestler, mm-hmm. um, I, I was a little jealous because I've always wanted to wrestle. That's been a dream of mine since I was a kid. But I also celebrated Dalton's accomplishment because I was so proud of him. And that's that's what we should be. We should be proud of each other. Yeah. wrestling is a business marco is marketable don't knock him just because you haven't found what you need to find to make it to the next level that's not marco's fault no so yeah think before you speak a lot of independent wrestlers especially now run off the mouth about things that they shouldn't be talking about it's like they don't realize social media is going to come back and bite them in the ass i know social media is going to come back and bite me in the ass i lost my job at gamestop because social media came back yeah. and bit me in the ass so please think before lots you speak. of people have lost their jobs we, from 10 years ago because of things on social media. Directors have lost their jobs. Yes. Wrestlers have lost their jobs. Yes. Lots of people have. So think before you speak. And why would you even take that shot? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Pointless. I hope Gunner, I hope Gunner succeeds. And I, I hope he reflects on this and re- realizes what a mistake he made. Mm-hmm. I really do. But that should not take away from what we were talking about, which is Marco Stunt. Congratulations. New yes. assignee to All Elite Wrestling. And we had no idea. So congratulations, Marco. And thank you, Andrew Britton, for posting that to me uh, about what Gunner said. He nominated him for the uh, MFR of the week for tomorrow. Uh, 
I don't think he is because I've already got one that I've been really saving and mm-hmm. I've been excited about. But I wanted to mention it on this show. So that's my piece on that. Congratulations, Marco. We love you so much. And uh, we hope you come back and see us sometime. And happy birthday. And happy belated birthday. You and yes. Logan. And everyone else whose birthday it is. I don't know. I, I thought his dad said him and Logan were born on like the same day or something. I don't know. They're not twins. They're not. They do look a lot alike. But, but even, they're... okay, so even if Logan's birthday was seven months ago, happy birthday, Logan. Yeah. Belated birthday, in case I forgot to mention it back then. <laughs> uh, moving on into less happy news, we got to talk about Jimmy Uso. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit funny that they were on Monday Night Raw last week and John Cena did a kind of a rap battle against them. Yeah. And made light of their arrest for drinking and driving. And everyone had a laugh about it. Two days later, Jimmy Uso arrested again for drunk driving. Um, This comes after Jeff Hardy just, what, two, three weeks ago was found passed out. Uh, This was in Pensacola, Florida. I think they had a show down there. Uh, Jimmy uh, and Jay, of course, the Uso brothers, world-famous tag team, one of the best tag teams going. Jay arrested last January for a DUI in Texas. Um I, I'm trying to see what the what their blood alcohol level. It doesn't really matter. No. The, the important thing was that he was arrested for it, and now it's like I apologize. It just like crashed on me. <laughs> the website, not the not the thing. Um, WWE put out a statement saying that the personal action it's it's his own personal actions, and that's the part that really baffles me. Like I I know Ace is real heated about this because Ace's father was mm-hmm. killed by a drunk was killed by a drunk driver. Yes. Um. I, I lost a friend in high school to a drunk driver. It, it affects a lot of people, not just yeah. me and Asa, Asa especially, but a lot of people. And it's it's such a poor decision, like we were talking about just a second ago. And the fact that WWE is just washing their hands clean of it because it didn't happen on company time, that's that's ridiculous. Because if Jimmy had been in a car accident and killed somebody, I guarantee he would have lost his job. Yeah. So should we give him a pass because he didn't hurt anybody? He's going to hurt somebody someday. Yeah. Um. In WWE, with with the wellness policy, you can get strikes for drugs if they test you for it. Well, he clearly has a drinking problem if mm-hmm. he's this is not the first time he's gotten in trouble for it, and it's dangerous. So why isn't the WWE stepping up and doing something about it? It baffles me, and I can't understand why. I I don't know. Um, if I had to say, they're not their feet aren't being put to the coals about it. You're um, and absolutely right. They, like you said, they're one of the best tag teams. Yeah, but that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't, but like celebrities, there's a lot of things matter. that shouldn't matter that end up mattering. That's true. Um, someone, I think it was on Four One Mania, when they were talking about this story, mentioned that, well, it's not WWE's problem. It wasn't on their company time, and I, I kind of get that. But then someone replied, "Well, wasn't on company time when oh, what's the big dummy's name that got in trouble for the racism?" What the hell's his name? Now I do wish Ace and Dalton The one were here. that we talked about recently? A couple of months ago, maybe a month or Sullivan? two. Sullivan? What is it? Sullivan? Lars Sullivan, yeah. Uh, someone mentioned, well, was Lars Sullivan on company time when he made those tweets? And they fined him for it? Yeah. Burn. No, that's, that's a good point. Especially because I'm pretty sure their contracts have something to do with the... Public image? Yeah, public image. And they have... It wasn't, if it's not still, wasn't their thing, like, be a star? Yeah. Like, be... Well, that was against bullying. But that's still public image. That's still, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. They, yeah. they could easily have something against him with this. They should have something against yes. him. Yes. But with... They probably need to offer him help over them finding him. Yeah, but it looks like they haven't done anything. I know. They've simply said that's his personal business. We're not going to get in his business because it's not Which, It's not our problem. Because, you know, yeah. again, someone pointed out it's 2019. Yes. Are people still dri- driving drunk with Lyft and Uber and taxis and everything else? You still can't get a designated driver people are still taking that risk and yes they absolutely are They are, and it, it is ridiculous especially with how much there is considering most like i'm gonna say taxi service because that's kind of what they all are yeah a lot of them offer free or reduced 
rides if you are drunk. Right. Because they don't want you driving. And because I know there's the thing, the company around here offers that. That you can get a free ride if you don't have a designated driver. Right. But it's just they, they're they being careless and reckless and <coughs> they're, stupid. They're being, and WWE is being really fast and loose with their re- enforcement. Yes. Because Lars Sullivan fined, whether it was legit or not, because no one really knows, but mm-hmm. was fined, I forget how much money, in the thousands, for controversial comments he had made years ago. Hulk Hogan was blacklisted from WWF for years because of comments he made years ago. But you're telling me that a man that gets drunk and gets in a car and puts people's lives at risk should not be held accountable for his actions off the clock? Hulk Hogan was off the clock. Lars Sullivan was off the clock. clock. That's ridiculous. WWE is such a shitty company sometimes for all the good that they do with the Make-A-Wish stuff and uh, helping children, charities, and stuff like that. Their own accountability for their wrestlers is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And I hate to think of what happens when someone gets hurt. Yeah. Because it won't fall on WWE's shoulders. They can wash their hands clean of it. Yeah. J- Jimmy Uso will be in trouble. WWE will just move on to the next wrestler. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad business. I want to see action being taken against it. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? Um, do you, do you, are we right? Are we looking too much into this? Is it really up to the, the individual person and WWE has no, um, responsibility in this they have no accountability or should they be held responsible for their professional athletes actions especially when it comes to something that could kill somebody let us know in the comments or message us you know how to do it (laughs) the five people that know will know i say that real quick we'll talk about it more on after dark tomorrow but this month the most listened to month in history for podzilla 1985 four years later and we are still climbing yeah so proud of you guys and and you guys for listening. I was originally proud of us. Okay. To you guys. So Neil Dashwood, formerly Emma from WWE, has signed with Impact. And that's great. Tineal Dashwood is one of my absolute favorites. Mm-hmm. She did so I hate this little bug. She did so well as Emma, the goofy moron from Australia, and then did even better as Evil Emma, the hot ass, half glove wearing mm-hmm. it's all about me. Um she left a couple of years ago after that god awful Emmalina thing blew up yeah she had i think she had like a competitive match with oscar when oscar was like red hot and had like a really long match with her and then was let go immediately after i remember at the time we were all thinking why was she given such a competitive match on her way out that doesn't make sense usually on your way out you put over the person and and especially with oscar it would be a squash match but she left she's been recovering she had some injuries um i keep up with her on social media not just because of the way she looks but also her thoughts um oh god Lindsay, don't message me right now. It's showtime. Sorry. Now she has signed with Impact. I'm hoping she goes by her real name, Tenille Dashwood, because that is such a cool ass name. Yeah. That is like the classiest name, Tenille Dashwood. It's certainly better than your name. Oh, thanks. So congratulations to Tenille. I can't wait to see what she does. In other sad news, Jerry Lawler, the king, issued a uh, lawsuit this week, filed a lawsuit against uh, officials and cops in Tennessee I believe it was from the, what was it, Hardeman County Jail and the sheriff over the death of his son, Brian Christopher, formerly known as uh, Grandmaster Sex A in WWE. A lot of people we know were were big fans of Brian and were friends with Brian. Um, they were all very heartbroken over his death. Mm-hmm. The, the terrible thing about it was that Brian committed suicide in the jail after he was arrested in last July um, for DUI and evading arrest. As the story goes, as it was told to me, and it was told to a lot of people, Jerry went to the police and told them about his son's problems and that he needed to be watched. They needed to take care of him. He was sure they would. And he was then found with uh, his shoelaces around his neck, dead from a hanging not long after that. Um, Jerry Lawler doesn't believe that he did kill himself. There, there's been a big speculation on what actually happened. And it looks like Jerry Lawler has now filed in court a $3 million lawsuit against them uh, in Tennessee. So we'll see where that goes. It's very, very sad situation. Mm-hmm. I, I was a big fan of Brian Christopher as well. Um, really heartbroken for Jerry Lawler because I grew up watching Jerry Lawler and it's just very, very tragic. There's way too much, way too much suicide. I swear yeah. every other article I read or every other celebrity you see is either cancer or suicide. 
and it's incredibly de- depressing. We had just in the past couple of years, Robin Williams committed suicide. Um, Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park committed suicide. It's just incredibly tragic, and I want to see what happens with it. And we will, of course, keep everybody up to date on what happens. Yeah. Uh, maybe in some happier news. Let's see. Big shout out to Asa Gray, who did provide us the notes yes. for the show. <laughs> so we didn't have to look it up ourselves. Yeah. Asa is still coming through with us, even when he's not here. The Big Show. Yes. To star in a new Netflix sitcom called... The Big Show Show. The Big Show Show. According to WWE.com, it is a half-hour multi-cam comedy series premiering... Uh, what was It begins in Los Angeles on Friday, August 9th. Ten episodes, going to be on Netflix. The um, the premise is this. When the teenage daughter of Big Show, and I love how they just call him Big Show and not yeah. Paul White. Yeah. A retired world-famous WWE superstar comes to live with him, his wife and two other daughters. He quickly becomes outnumbered and outsmarted despite being seven feet tall and weighing 400 pounds. He is no longer the center of attention. And this also stars Allison Munn, uh, Ray Lancaster, Juliet Donenfield, I am so sorry I butchered that name, and Lily, Book, Lily Brooks O'Brien. That's too many names in one. I don't know. I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not either, especially because it is coming out the same day as Glow Season 3. Well, easy. We'll get there in a second. We've got to give the Big Show his credit. But Big Show's actually a pretty decent actor. Yeah, uh, he was in Psych. He was in Psych. He was in Jingle All the Way yeah. as one of the Santa Clauses. He was famously... Or infamously, however you want to say it. He was Captain Insano in The Water Boy, which was an all time classic. Uh, he's, he's got a great personality and is incredibly funny and charming. Yeah. My problem, I just, I hate the premise of this, that they're billing it as like a real life thing. But it's not but his it's not. real family. It's not his real family. And that always makes it very murky to me. You know, a lot of the shows, when they do that, they'll have the character, but they'll, they'll portray like a kind of, not quite the real person yeah like they'll change a last name or something like that um and then they'll do like uh well this is kind of my life but it's also a little bit you know fantasy where in this they're just flat out calling him big show and i hope they only call him big show that's just his name that's just his name i want his kids to call him big show what the hell is that there's a dog oh well that scared me anyway (laughs) (laughs) But the, the big dogs out front. Yeah, I'm. I'm not as into like family sitcoms anymore. I used to watch them, but I don't. Well, you. I feel bad for you because I feel like you missed out on the golden era of family sitcoms and the Which Family is, Matters and the Full Houses. And I, I watched all of you that. You couldn't have watched that. It was before your time. It's called reruns. It's not the same. ABC Family did that. That was pretty much their entire like morning. I don't. That's not the same though. You're I not getting it. All of them. Oh my god. Okay, name one character from Full House. Don't do that because you watch Full House. I was like, <laughs> seriously, I Full House is the one that I watched the most of. What, family Matters. One character. Go. Um, Steve. Steve what? Urkel. That's not fair. That's like the one character <laughs> anyone knows. <laughs> I didn't watch Family Matters as much because it wasn't on as much. They were still new to me. Racism. It was not. Well, it wasn't on my part. I watched it when it was on. So what about you guys? Are you going to watch the Big Show show? Or are you going to avoid it like the plague? I know what my answer is going to be. <laughs> uh, now, you said that also premieres the same day as Glow Season Glow 3. Glow Season 3, yes. That's much more exciting. Yes. Because you're a big fan of Glow. I am. I really like the show. I also watch the documentary about the actual glow glow um i used to actually watch glow when i was younger like i also caught it randomly um i don't remember much about it i just i was a big fan of wrestling but i grew mm-hmm. up you know with wwf and stuff like that so i was always looking for alternative it's something else to watch um and i would watch glow occasionally but it was i think i was still young enough that i wasn't really like a hormonal teenager <laughs> so I didn't get the appeal of, of I didn't get the part where it was oh women in scantily clad clothing. Uh-huh. To me, it was just wrestling. Yeah. So I thought that was neat. I've I've watched a few episodes of the show and I think it's good, but you love it. I knew. I really enjoy it. I think it's a really good show. You also you catch parts of it, so you don't get the full story. You don't. Are you talking about me personally? Yes, okay. you personally. Um, yeah. So it is for, a drama. As far as I know, it it's Allison Bree cheated on. 
uh, with this girl's husband. Her and best friend. Her best friend's husband. And then they started wrestling together. And then they... Working the same show. And they hated each other. But then they were friends. And then they're also rivals. And then everybody celebrated because women's wrestling won. Kind of. That was mostly season one. What happened in season two? Season two was their battle with the um, company was for the ratings. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was topical things in it especially involved around the me too movement um i just rolled my eyes i know because it, it's topical it yes topical but does an 80s show i mean gonna be topical for today's you know what i mean it happened in the 80s they just but it was talk the about 80s i don't know what that means um but if it ends where i'm assuming because whenever i watch the glow documentary they ran through a hotel, right? Yes. And so I think that's where the show is finally going, is to the hotel where the show more so ran, because they, they did lose their deal with the company. The company. There's been a lot of women's wrestling federations that have popped up in the past you know, 10, 20 years because Glow is probably the most famous one. There are some that are very serious. There are some that are strictly camp. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to watch more of Glow because I, I'm really interested in the history of women's wrestling. Yeah. E- even though it's a, it's a stylized drama, it's kind of the real story, but kind of not. Obviously, the characters aren't the same as the yeah. real women and stuff like that. Um, but it does have a lot of wrestling talent on it. We know Joey Ryan was on it. Chavo yes. Guerrero was on it. Yes. Um, I touched Joey Ryan's penis. You you did. I did. In the ring. I'm pretty sure Joey Ryan slapped his wife on that show. Okay, you're going to have to give me some context on that one. Joey Ryan slapped his wife Cause on I that think, show? Because Joey Ryan plays a big wrestler in the show. Okay. For a wrestling event that um, Liberty, Debbie Liberty Bell goes to. And this is the wrestling show that gets her into wrestling. Because mm-hmm. they all started as actresses. Right. And that's why they were taking the role. And they just had to do wrestling for it. Right. And so she went to this show where Joey Ryan was in it. And he slaps a female wrestler or his valet. I don't know exactly what that story was happening. And I'm pretty sure I read that. It was Joey Ryan and his wife. His real wife. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I got I get where you're coming from now. Yeah. Um, that is August 9th. 9th as well. Yes. So keep your calendar open for that. Are you going to binge it? Probably not going to binge it. It's hard to binge things I, nowadays. I've heard that, that Glow Season 3 is so scary some people can't sleep. Then it's taken a turn. <laughs> Talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, a <laughs> couple last things here. Retromania Wrestling was announced for the Nintendo Switch, which is the important one to me, and also uh, I think PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you haven't seen it, it's very much looks like an old school arcade game. It looks like WrestleFest. So which, will it actually work on the Switch? Yeah, unlike WWE 2K18, it should actually work on the Switch. In fact, that was the big thing. I'm a big fan of RGC85. Mm-hmm. I watch his YouTube channel a lot. He's a big wrestling fan. Hey Sean. Hey Sean. Yeah. Thanks, Ethan. Um, it's I didn't mean to call you Ethan. He's he's a big wrestling fan. He tore 2K18 apart because it was such a goddamn unplayable it was mess. Such a bad port. It was the it's the worst game on Switch. Don't at me. Like because even don't other, think anyone's gonna need to. Even if other games are bad, this one's like literally unplayable. You yeah. get more than two people in there, it's unplayable. Well, I always wanted um, Fire Pro Wrestling to come to the Switch. I thought mm-hmm. that would be really really cool. Yeah. Because it's also kind of a stylized, um, cartoony graphic. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping it would run better on the Switch. Well, this game's coming out, and I'm excited about it. I'm also kind of worried about it because it is going to have, I think they said, two to eight player uh, local and online, I think. Um, maybe four player local. The roster, though, they said there's only going to be about 16 wrestlers available, and they're going to be real wrestlers. We've already got the Road Warriors were announced. Um, Zack Zaber Jr. is in it. I believe Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore is in it. And that's all very, very cool. The graphics look amazing. I love the old 2D, like, hand-drawn sprites. Mm-hmm. I, I've always been a fan of that, and I wish it would make a bigger comeback. Um, Can you make wrestlers? They said that it is not in the game, 
but they know how much their fans want it, so they're looking into it. So that could be a possible future DLC, which would be great. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of unique moves. It looks like a very, very cool game. I just fear it's going to be a very arcadey, limited game. Like, there's not going to be a lot of meat and potatoes to it, other than just it being fun. The gameplay they showed off was Hawk versus Animal, and it did look really, really good. I'm going to keep my eyes out for it. I really want to play it. I'll probably pick it up when it comes out, because there's only two games on the Switch right now that are wrestling-related. There's 2K18, which is a travesty. Yes. And then there's this other game called, like, Boxy Wrestling. I was going to buy it, because it kind of looked like... It looked like if you did Minecraft as a wrestler, but everything I read is that it's super simple. It's not very fun. There's nothing to it. You get bored of it really quick, so I stayed away from it. Um, so hopefully Retro Mania Wrestling will be better, and we'll keep my eyes on it, and still... Hope and pray for Fire Pro Wrestling on Switch. In other video game news, uh, 2K released two new screenshots of 2K20 today. One was of Brock Lesnar, and one was of Bailey during her entrance. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, camera behind her, of course, yeah. because obvious reasons. Uh, it looks really good. The graphics looked amazing, but the problem with it is like the graphics always look amazing, especially in stills. Especially in stills, every time they. Um, Every time they show, oh god, I typed that in wrong. Every time they show previews for it, the graphics look insane, and we always go, "Oh, that looks even better. That looks better than ever. That looks even better than last year." And then we buy it, and it's like the it same looks thing. The same. There's small improvements all the time, sure, but there's never improvements to the point that I feel it's worth spending really another worth. sixty bucks. And I always get the collector's edition. Dalton and I both. In fact, it's kind of become we a tradition. We didn't get the last one. I didn't, or he didn't. You didn't. He did. I'm pretty sure it was mostly for the pop. I don't even remember what the last one it was. It was the Ric Flair one. Oh, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, you yeah. got that pop, which yeah. is like the coolest thing in it. I was pretty jealous. Well, it also had that replica ring, the Hall of Fame oh, ring. Yeah. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I didn't get the collector's edition last year. I'll see what the collector's edition is this year. But um, they're really going to have to do something different to wow me. Yeah. Because roster updates. Did your phone just buzz? Yes, it did. And it doesn't ever do that. It buzzed like six times last night when we were in bed, reading until you went to sleep, and then I went back to my own house. Wink. Um, yeah, they're gonna have to do something really cool. Still, pictures do not do not impress me. Show no. me some video. Yeah. Show me some new features. They are going to, I think, reveal the cover. Uh, yeah, cover reveal is August fifth. Do we know who's on the cover? We don't. Okay. Everyone's pretty sure it's Becky Lynch. In fact, I'm, it should be. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It should be. It should be Becky Lynch, or at least at the very least, it should be like have Becky they, Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte, Charlotte yeah. Flair, uh, Sasha have Banks, they had and Bailey. A woman on the cover. Uh I want to say yes, but I don't know who. Let me look up real quick. Um, because well, it depends. Are you talking about 2K specifically, or just in WWE in general? 2K. 2K, I don't think so. Because and whenever you get to older ones, it's just a bunch of wrestlers. But more recently, it's just one on the cover. Yeah, and um, I'm pretty sure it was, at least in the past couple years, it was The Rock, then Cena, then Austin, then Lesnar, then Rollins, then AJ Styles. So if they weren't on the cover by then, no. I do know that, I think it was Day of Reckoning, one or two on GameCube had Trish Stratus on the cover. Was, was that with multiple people, though? Yeah, it was like Trish. That, to me, doesn't mean the same thing. So you think that Becky should just be the cover athlete by herself? Or it at least that it should be, it should it be should, it, a group of women? Yeah, either just Becky um, or a group of women, I think, would be fitting. What if it's Ronda Rousey? I w- it would not be my favorite, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't considering be surprised they probably plan these things way in advance. Yeah. But it, and Rousey was such a big thing whenever she first came in that they were probably like, yes, we need to I promote f- this. I feel like if Ronda Rousey is the cover athlete, it's not going to go well. People are going to be pissed. They'll probably offer an alternate cover because they've done that before. Yeah. Um, there was one year, I forget who it was. I think it was 14. <clears throat> and I think it was Rock on the cover. But then the flip inside was Daniel Bryan because everyone wanted Bryan on the cover. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. But it absolutely should be Becky Lynch. Yeah. And she was just on uh, the ESPN cover with Allison Bree from Glow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, now is the time to pull the trigger and yeah. and capitalize on the popularity of Becky Lynch. I mean, she's one of the hottest stars in professional wrestling today. Do it. Honestly, well, also- if they make the special edition aid the man – 
special edition of Becky. That would be cool, too. I don't know why, but I thought you said, what if they made it a McMahon no, special edition? Man. Where Not it's McMahon. There's four covers. <laughs> there's Vince, Linda, Stephanie, and Shane. <sighs> no. Which cover do you the want? Oh man. I want Becky. Uh, we'll find out August 5th. And then the riots will start. If it's not who they want. Watch it be Brock Lesnar again. Ugh. Or Rollins. Wasn't he last year? No, that was two years ago. Last year was AJ. Oh. You know who it could? It could be Kofi. It could be. What if it was Kofi and Becky? Would that I be mean, okay? It would be because they're... I don't think anyone would riot. Um, it's just the issue with how long have they been doing single? And then... To do a dual cover with like that, yeah, I feel like it would it would hurt both of them. Like, okay, well, in that case, it doesn't. If it was just, I feel like they probably should just go one or the other. So we're talking about two athletes who both rose in the ranks in the same time period. Yes, and they both won their title at WrestleMania. Yes, who do you put on the cover? Kofi Kingston or Becky Lynch? If. I mean, it's a hard thing to say. They both deserve it. Yeah, but Kofi's been there a lot longer and has Kofi been waiting has for his been turn. A lot, lot, yeah. Did I change your mind? No. Like, if Kofi's on it, I won't complain. Like, I won't be like, man, it should have been Becky. Um, I'm probably a little biased because I am more of a feminist that Becky won both. So you're more of a feminist than you are for black rights? No. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, Deborah? I, I would be fine with both. Either one. Yeah. Um, if I had to pick, I would. That is a tough one. It is. Because they both really deserve it. And I feel do. like if it's Kofi, it's going to be the New Day. It wouldn't just be Kofi. They'd probably put the New Day on the cover. Or maybe that could be the reversible. Put Kofi on one side and Becky on the other. Boom. Yeah. I just solved it. Or, I just solved yeah. it. That make works. The, make that the works. PS4 version. Kofi, because it's blue. PS4 is blue, and that's SmackDown. Um, Xbox is green, but we'll make it red. <laughs> and <laughs> the title's red. Yeah. So, r- r- but she uh, had both titles. Not okay. Now you're nitpicking, dude. Mm. Just make the reversible cover. And that's it for the news of the week. <laughs> the last is uh, we're talking about Raw and SmackDown. Um, didn't watch a lot of Raw and SmackDown. I watched some highlights. This is usually where Asa and Dalton really kick yeah. in and help us out. I will yeah. say that apparently this Raw was the most hands-on that Paul Heyman has ever been with the show. And it reflected in some of the segments that I saw. The stuff that I did see, I really liked. I really did like. Um, Lesnar had an absolute destruction of seth rollins backstage and in the ring i mean he obliterated him which is what you need to really sell a feud Mm -hmm. not the silly shit that they do a lot of the time but just like blood and gore and we hate each other um that was very very cool that was an old school beatdown. i loved it the oc are the new tag team champions which is it a punishment for the usos possibly maybe don't know all i know is that they the title they don't have the titles anymore because they were the champions Last week, right? Or was it still the revival? I don't know. I don't know either. And I really wish Dalton and Asa were here right now. Because <laughs> all I know is that the OC, that's the uh, Gallows and Anderson, they won the mm-hmm. titles, which is very, very cool. Um, now they and AJ all have titles, which is awesome. What does the OC stand for? I'm assuming original club. Okay, that's what I was assuming too. I like, I, know, I get the joke. Cue up that What You Say song. I get it. Um, but I think it's a better name than just the club. The club sounds so generic. The OC at least has a ring to it. I am surprised that they haven't gotten sued though. You know, cause the OC, what do you think of when you think of the OC? Uh, the Fox show, right? Really? You don't think of the, you didn't watch the OC? It sounded like a show, but I, it sounded like a show. It, it wasn't something okay. that I watched. How did you not watch that? What was it? The the OC. Okay, I know what it's called. You have to describe it. It was about Orange County. It was a soap opera about rich, pretty people. Okay, that's why I didn't watch it, because it was a soap opera. It ran from 2003 to 2007. Oh, I, okay. I did not watch you were, soaps. You were only nine when it came out. That's probably part of it. I, wow. I also didn't watch soaps. I, yeah, but it was a sexy soap. It was a sexy young soap. 
didn't care. And that what you remember that skit from SNL, the what you say. Uh-huh. That's from that. There's a part okay. where they do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, they probably played it on ABC Family. You could have caught reruns, right? Yeah, sandwiched in between. They play step family sitcoms, step. not soap operas. Hmm. Uh, the other big thing, personally, from Raw was that Maria Kanellis won the title, and I loved this. This was awesome. Did you? I know you were half asleep when I was watching these clips. Did you see what happened? No. So, our truth. I think it was our truth and Carmella fought Drake Maverick and his wife. I think was the match and a tag match. And after the match was over, everyone dogpiled onto Truth, and Mike Kanellis came out with the twenty four seven title. <clears throat> So he goes backstage and he's hiding in his locker room. He's, he's locked the, locked the door and Maria walks up to it and knocks and says, let me in. And he's like, no, who is it? It's your wife. How do I know it's my wife? And she's like, let me in or I'm going to kick you in your vagina, which like, goddamn, Maria Canellis is good at being catty. <laughs> she is unparalleled. So they cut to it later and he talks about how he did it for them. And he's, he, you know, are you proud of me? I'm proud of myself. And she tells him to lay down and he's like, what are you talking about? She's like, lay down. Yeah, uh, I when I when my un, when my unborn uh or when my child is born, I want him to have a champion for a parent. So she makes Mike Canellis lay down, and then she pins him and becomes the new twenty four seven champion. And then she walks through the group, the people that are always chasing after the title. <clears throat> she walks through them, holding the title up because she was like first pregnant champion. And she's walking to him, going pregnant champion, walking through. Do you want a shot at me? Do you want a shot at the pregnant champion? And no one will fight her because she's because pregnant. she's pregnant, and that is brilliant that oh is my so goodness. awesome i that love it that is great that is absolutely incredible because now everyone's afraid to touch her yeah because she's a pregnant mo- mother to be because they they would be <clears throat> obliterated if they did right that is such like legitimately great storytelling i don't know who did that but my hat off to you <laughs> the 24 7 title started as a complete absolute joke and has become one of my absolute favorite things about the show mm-hmm. not not just the silly segments but like stuff like this was legitimately good yeah. i loved it uh i can't wait to see what they do with it don't bone it, it it's good and i love maria canellis mm-hmm. she's so good uh, mike canellis had an incredible match on 205 live against drake maverick it's so weird to see that disconnect between what they are on raw versus what they are on yeah. like 205 live and i hope that they find a way to make that more connected connected yeah um and then in also very cool news they had a giant brawl to end raw with uh the oc um what was it the oc and the usos samoa joe and i think drew galloway i'm sorry drew mcintyre i still do that <laughs> against roman reigns oh sorry I already said the Usos. Roman Reigns, the Usos, and um, Cedric Alexander. And Alexander did this crazy dive off the top of like the the thing over the, the entrance ramp. Mm-hmm. And it, he really felt like a star, which was great after that stupid-ass angle they did a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So that, that was cool. I can't wait to see more of that. And they had Ricochet win a gauntlet match to get a shot at AJ, AJ Styles at um, SummerSlam, which, by the way, is a week and a half away. Wow. Yeah. So it's not this Sunday, but next? Right. Wow. We'll get back to watching wrestling, eating some pizza, talking about bras and underwear that you girls like to shop for. It's going to be a great time. You are so bitter. So bitter. And then SmackDown happened. I don't know. I don't know either. I think we watched a highlight video of it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember either. So we're just going to skip it. I'm sure it was good. Or it wasn't. <laughs> go go to your favorite online site and you can check it out. Um, lastly, we are going to mention one thing and then we're going to get out of here for the night. Uh, CCW was over the weekend. We're not going to talk about it in length because we want Asa and Dalton here to talk about it with us. Yes. Because they were such a big part of the show as well. But I do want to say I thought it was a really good show. I thought it was also a good show. Um, it is very hard for me to remember everything that is going on. Because you're watching it through a lens. I am watching it through a lens, which means that I am not really focused about what they're doing. Right. I am thinking about, am I getting everything in the shot? Does the shot look good? Um, am I going to fall over? Um, am I going to get kicked in the face? Jesus. It, there's a lot. There is a lot going on. There's a There's a movie called Survival of the Dead. Have you ever seen it? No. It's a Romero film. No, no, no. Diary of the Dead. Survival of the Dead was a different one. They're still Romero, but, um, they're talking about, like, cameras in there and, and how the main character 
even though this terrible stuff's happening, he films it all because it disconnects him from what he's watching. So it's like you're there, but you're not there. You're seeing what's happening, but it's like you're not, it's not real. It, you know, if you're seeing it on a screen, you can tell yourself it's a movie. Right. It's why I don't get scared from horror movies because I know it's a movie. Except Friday the 13th. You jumped. Did I? You did jump. I don't. At the remake, which was really weird because that was not a scary film. I don't think the I jumped. The only thing scary about that movie was how nice that girl's body was when she was banging that Was dude. I tired and they did a loud noise? They always do loud noises. That's what okay, they do. Then, uh, anyway, I don't count that. CCW was this weekend. It was a really, really good show. We'll tell you all about it next week. Uh, I do want to say thank you to everyone involved and all the fans that came out to watch us. Um, I had my first official match because I had an, I had that match with Dalton at Super Show, but it was a, oh, your team lost and so now you're in this. Mm-hmm. This was a planned match. Yeah. Um, it went okay. I'm not the kind of person that's ever going to like try to pump myself up for something I did okay on or I did great on. I did okay. Uh, Justin Smart, Damone Salavino, and Donnie, Dangerous Donnie Six, are so good at what they do that they helped me be not embarrassing. Um, I want to get better. I want to learn. I want them to teach me. I want to, I want to learn from everybody, but I just want, I don't know if they're listening, but I just want to thank those three for everything that they did for me. They're absolutely incredible talent, as is everybody from CCW. We had Matthew Justice there. He was really cool. Just super he nice was guy, cool. too. Loved that guy. Sean Spears, talked to him backstage. Very intimidating. <laughs> Very intimidating, but also really nice. When he was talking backstage, he seemed like super nice, but I didn't, I didn't experience much of that before his yeah. match. And of course, his corner was on my side. So the entire time, I'm just trying to stay out of his way. It's probably the best thing that you could possibly trying do. Trying to just not be in his way. Cause if I'm in the way of like Billy, he understands. I know he understands. It's fine. If I'm in Sean Spears' way... He doesn't give a shit about you. Oh, boy. Uh also want to thank Mikey McFinnigan, you know, the big Mark yeah. Gugliak on campus. He was guest ref, guest ref in Dalton's match. I want to thank Heath for being there. Um, I don't know if he's coming back. He wrapped up his program with Dalton. That was really, really good. It was, just, it was a really, really good show. Um, we'll talk about it next week at length because it was a lot of fun and we have a lot of things to say about it. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us tonight. You want to know what we did? Take sure. a guess. Um, 45. 52. Oh, so. Full length I show. Mean, full length show, you definitely just shorter. stall for six minutes? For six minutes? Yeah. Um, well, I can try and do the plugs. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Don't. Do you want to do the plugs or do you want me to do um, the plugs? First off, tomorrow night, Podzilla After Dark. Yes. We'll be back with an uncensored, uh, it's always our most popular show, that and I want to believe, thumbs up on that. Um, mm-hmm. They did just do a new hype train yesterday. Yes. So go check that out. That was a lot of fun. I have no idea what they talked about. Uh, I do. They talked about, on the hype train, they talked about Marvel Unlimited and Fire Emblem and Jesse and Trevor's Adventures in Russia. That's a weird show. Oh, uh, okay. But, but tomorrow on, on After Dark, we are going to... Uh, can, can I give you a preview of the, of the motherfucker of the week? It's sure. first F-bomb we dropped on the show. I apologize. With Dalton Nasa here, it's so clean. Um, an article came out in the past couple of days about a woman who said that childless millennials oh, yeah. should be banned from Disney. Which is, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Yes. And it's also, it could have very well have been one of those internet prank things because I also saw someone complaining about people on with like EBT cards pulling up to the, um, the counter with their lobster and their steak in yeah. and then going out to there. And it's very much tongue in cheek making fun of those people that make fun of that. Um, so it could have been that. But then a writer from the New York Post wrote an article about how it's weird for childless millennials and for adults without children to go to disneyland no it's not and it's the it's so dumb i can't believe we're having this argument no we're not but i can't believe this but, is a thing yeah someone's because going lo- it's it's weird that you would want to go to this awesome place that a lot of people can't go to when they're a child right that also why do you think disney is such a big company yeah, if they, if they literally adults. only sold to children they would still be the size of 
Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. That's exactly but what. But they're not. That's exactly what Walt Disney said. That if you just go for children and not adults, you're gonna you're gonna end up done. So it's it's unbelievable the backlash on this from both sides. For people that are in support of this article and for people that are saying this is the dumbest thing they've ever heard, it's incredible. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll reveal the MFR of the week, and it's going to be a lot of fun. That is tomorrow on Podzilla After Dark. That is it for us tonight on Pro Wrestling Unscripted. I thought we did a great job without Asa and Dalton, yeah. um, but I did miss them so much because <laughs> it's not the same. No, it's, it's not, not the same when it's not all four of us. No, We're like not. the four horsemen just of podcasting. <laughs> all right, Allie, hit us with those links. Um... For $1 a month on patreon.com slash pozilla1985, you can get the pre-shows, every single pre-show for the month. Um, well, they, of all time. Of all time. So you can, you once can go you, back and listen to yes, all the pre-shows. Yes, you can go back and listen to all of them. They are a fun time. Typically, some of the best stuff that we record is on the pre-show. Because it's no pressure. Yeah. Just get on there and have fun. Now, it is very, it's uncensored, very uncensored, especially me. <laughs> um check us out uh at podzilla 1985.com just to go back and listen to some of the old shows listen to last night's show listen to the i want to believe we did two weeks ago yes because my favorite show or my favorite way to listen to the show when i do want to listen to it is through spotify i love the spot i love spotify i'm mm-hmm. a subscriber and that's how i listen to the show for the most part but unfortunately spotify only goes back 100 shows and yeah. we do four shows a week yes and we've done that for years so yes. there is so much content on podzilla 1985.com we might, how many shows uh, how many shows have we done <laughs> we're, ge- we're getting close to the simpsons by now i we're way past the simpsons Are we past- they have oh 600 how many do we have we passed 600 probably two years ago dude Dude. Okay, then we are past the Simpsons. Think of, think about yeah. No, we're way past the Simpsons. I don't know how many we've done officially, but um, we have so much content. We've covered so many issues yes. on our shows: yeah. shootings, school shootings, gay marriage being passed, yeah. uh, presidents being elected. Like yeah. we have such a history. We've had so many guests on the show, including if you're interested, Jeff Hardy, Jerry Lynn, Austin Lane. Cody Ooh. Wilson, Damon Salavino. Animal. Animal we had on recently from yes. WWE. So, yeah, we do a lot. And you can catch all of it at podzilla1985.com. Yes. I also, to talk to us at facebook.com slash podzilla1985.com. We have so many listens. Like we talked about, this is the most listened to month of all time for us. But we only talk to, like, five people. Nobody likes to talk to us. We they don't like, like us personally, I don't know. We think. would like... For more of you to talk to us. We do. We love talking to our fans. We Zane do. Laney become a friend. Uh, Ciro Viegas has become a friend. Uh, Josh and, and Alan from Press Start to Join are good friends of ours. Like, we love our fans. Yeah. We Josh love to interact is, with you. Josh is coming down just to pick up a t-shirt. He is. <laughs> that, that special edition, uh, get in losers, Area 51 t-shirt coming very, yep. very soon. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us. Ali did a bang up job on oh, that. Thanks. Way better than Dalton. Not quite on the level of Asa, but I keep know. reaching for those stars. Uh, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you tomorrow for Podzilla After Dark. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Later.